people ask, if God exists, why do we see some people go through so much things? Children are born with defect. Children go through so much. How can Allah exist? And all of this happens. Number one, brothers and sisters, we have to understand that in having a child, you know, it's amazing sometimes. We as a human being, whenever everything goes wrong, you know who to blame? Allah. That's the easy target. Anytime something goes wrong in our life, let's put it on Allah. I choose a wife. Things didn't work right. Who am I going to blame? Just kiss my... Allah decided... What can I do? Even though I chose it. I saw it. I decided, no, no, I have to blame Allah. The same thing sometimes. You see people, a woman or a sister doesn't wear hijab. You ask her, why don't you wear? Say, Allah doesn't want me to. How come? Doesn't Allah control everything? Yes. So if he wants me to wear, he could change my heart and make me wear. So he's in control. So now who to blame? Allah. Everything goes wrong in our life. Let's blame Allah. What is my role? Zero. He controls everything. But in reality, that's not the truth. When it comes to having children, there are something we call al illa tam and there is illa naqisa, which means a full cause and an incomplete cause. To have a child, Allah is not the only one who makes decision in those things. Even though the Quran was clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, sometimes I decide what to have. Sometimes you decide to give some people only girls. You try the second child, girl. The third girl. The fourth girl. The fifth girl. The sixth. The seventh. You say, okay, I give up. You know, this decision of Allah. It says sometimes, In some cases, it gives boys. You want a girl? Try the second time, boy. The third time, a boy. The fourth time, the fifth. You go ten. Okay, now I give up. Who decided that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three says, How will you zawija hum wa inatha? In some cases, he said, I mix boy, girl. Boy, girl. Or sometimes girl and boy. Sometimes, first one is a boy. Second one is a boy. The third one becomes a girl. Sometimes, the other way around. Girl, girl, boy. Oh, he does that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm the one who makes that decision. Number four. وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ أَقِيمًا in some cases, nothing happens. They try, they take medication, they travel, they do all kinds. Nothing happens. Allah said, I make that decision. What to have? I make that decision. But in some cases, he makes that decision. But having a child, there is illa Allah and the parents in it. You know, most 99% of the children who are born with certain problems, the parents are involved in it. And I'm not going to explain to you more, but I'm just going to give you some references that you can read to see what the Rasulullah said. The night Imam Ali and Fatima got married, what are the advices he gave to them? It's a book called Shajaratu Tuba. In that book, there is advices. Rasulullah said Imam Ya Ali, Tonight you got married. If you don't want Allah to bless you a child with this defect, don't do ABC. If you don't want your child to end up this, don't do this. If you want your child to become like this, do this. All the advices is mentioned in there. Because you have to understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, he said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي We created human being. In the best shape. How can he say. And then turn around. And make something else. He says. 
لقد خلقنا الانسان في احسن تكوين. We play a big role in that. Not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, there are certain situations. It's a test of Allah. But that comes in the very rare situation. In the many cases, we the parents, we play a role in how our children should become in what we do. And today, you can check with the doctors. They can tell you so more about this also in details. When a woman is pregnant and they smoke, what happened to that child? What does that have to do with Allah? Nothing. So the mother is the one who is affecting the child. A woman is pregnant and she is on drugs. What do you think is going to happen to the child? That has nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has everything to do with the payment. So when we see certain things like that, don't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately. Look at our own action because it plays a big role in how the child will be in the future. Because you have to understand, brothers and sisters, our actions, not only it affects our children, it sometimes affects generation of our children. What you do today as a father it can affect your children and great-grandchildren too. I'll give you one example quickly. You go to the Quran in Surah Al-Kahf. Example of a good, how it affects the children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Kahf, in the story of Musa and Khidr. When they came to the last point of their journey, right? when Khidr told Musa, this wall needs to be ruined and rebuilt again. Then what happened? Khidr alayhi salam asked Musa. Musa said, why are you going to work for these people who refuse to be nice to us? After they rebuild the wall, what did Khidr told Musa? Listen to the ayah clearly. أَمَّا الْجِدَارِ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ That wall belongs to whom? To the two orphans in the city. That's all Quran says about them. Are they Mormon? No. Are they believers? Quran didn't say anything. The one he said, Wakana Abu Huma Saliha. But their father was a righteous servant. The children, they didn't do anything. The father was good. Now Allah sent Khidr and Musa to come and serve them, not because of them, because of their father. Because of the father's action, good deeds, was able to reach to their children to rip the good of their father. So our actions can play a big role in our children's life. That is to understand. So whenever something happens, we cannot just turn and blame Allah. We have to look back in our action and say, what did I do wrong? Because I could be one of the reasons of what is happening to my children.